Come everyone to join us with just a commentary. So we're gonna check out a video entitled Welcome to Bangkok Thailand documentary. Of course, I'd like to thank you guys so very much for requesting this video. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Oh, this chair is squeaking a lot, man. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. If you want me to react to the video, leave a comment below and I'll try my best to react to it. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead. Welcome to Bangkok King Thailand. Rama of the first wanted to make his mark. King Rama the first. Wow. It's a lot so of generation ago. To turn a small fishing village into his new residence. Oh wow. Bellico's neighbors had reduced his hitherto beloved capital into rubble. That's his home. The gods were consulted and the evil spirits placated. Wow. Good advice was exchanged. No efforts were spared and mm. high flying plans were forged. Of the planes. The wise prophesied a golden future, a residence for the gods. They even saw a capital of the world. There was also a new name for this global seat of government, Krum Tep Maha Nakon. Never heard of it? No. Yeah. That's no surprise. Outside the country, the new city continued to be known under its old name. Which is Bangkok? Nice. Bank of Thailand. Wow. That is so neat, yo. Wow. Is that a river? Or is it part of a lake? Welcome to Krung Tep. That's its short form. Bangkok's official name still is ah. the longest name of any capital in the world. What? So that's the original name. 20 million visitors. Bangkok took the top spot of 20 most million visitors. cities in the world in 2016. Well ahead of London and Paris. Wow. Humongous, neat, historic. Named after the wow. Indian god of dawn is one of Bangkok's best known landmarks and Thailand's most famous temple. Well maintained. It's adorned with flower patterns made of shells and Chinese porcelain. More than a million individual pieces were used. Whoa, it's a lot. To maintain the temple's shine, these mosaics are polished and the stucco freshened up every 10 years. This has to be done by hand on the Wat Arun. By hand, yeah. Wow, that is some serious, serious hey, scary. We use very traditional, very simple methods in our restoration works. The white stucco is made of ground and fired sandstone, making it more durable than any modern paint. Wow, it dries in just a few minutes. You can wash it, and it's very resistant to rain and moisture. That is great, man. The technique takes a lot of time, and it's expensive. That's why it's only used for the restoration of royal temples. Nice. And every 10 years too, because it'll take very long to build often. Every 10 years. The easiest way to reach the Wat Arun is by ferry. Those who opt to come here by car will encounter Bangkok from its Traffic. pleasant side. Traffic. <laughs> Traffic. Traffic. <laughs> no one likes traffic. The dream of the car friendly city. For nearly an entire century, planning and construction in Bangkok My gosh. focused almost exclusively on motorized personal transport. That's a lot of ways to get into Bangkok. These days, it's possible to cross the city center on three lines with a sky train or the underground. Nice. There's no better way of getting from A to B in a quick and safe manner in Thailand's capital. With a train? The greater metropolitan area of Bangkok uh, is home to more than 15 million people my with a gosh. population density two and a half times that of Los Angeles. You know what I noticed? There are a lot of women involved in the work industry there. 
There's a woman driving the train, a human security, a woman that's polishing the, the temple. That's good. Gender equality. Switzerland. Compared to the chaos on Bangkok streets, they feel like a parallel universe, an almost clinically clean and perfectly organized world of punctuality. Hmm. Ice cold air from air conditioning units and polished granite. That's good. Passengers mustn't make a mess. And they're not allowed to eat or drink either. Good. Keep the place nice and clean. This system is that with its 36 kilometers and its capacity of roughly 700,000 passengers a day, it's still far too small for this sprawling city. Are you serious? Hmm. What's wrong with that one? They're fixing it, they're making it. An airplane graveyard in the middle of Bangkok. The shells of several retired planes lie here, from short haul craft to jumbo jets. What are they? It's not an official museum and not an actual destination for tourists. The compound is in private hands, and that's why it's possible to visit it for a fee of around five euros. So what, Adam? The investor had originally planned to use these wrecks for event-oriented dining experiences. Alternatively, he hoped to sell off parts. No oh. plan worked. <laughs> the airplane graveyard isn't listed because, in travel guides yet, and most Bangkok because it's still calling the airplane graveyard, and I'm thinking I want this for free. To look up the address Please. and show a taxi driver the map. It's much easier to find the Wat Trimit, wow. the temple of the nice. Buddha. Clean and nice. King Ramadanite. It houses a treasure that's 700 years old and had long been thought lost. The statue of the sage on whose teachings Buddhism was founded. It was hidden under what a simple that? stucco coating covered in colorful glass shards. This coating was accidentally damaged during renovation works in 1955, really? revealing its gold interior. The statue weighs five and a half tons and consists, depending on the body part, of up to... I remember one of you were telling me that when you touch the hand that's dropping down, it's like a... a reaching the ability to touch it is a blessing or something like that. So some people have tried to reach out to the hand that's coming down like that. Chinatown unmistakably starts right behind the temple. Long before Bangkok became <coughs> the capital, there was already a large Chinese community here. I find Thailand have a lot of mixed culture and mixed, mixed nationalities. Its traditions and faith Chinese, in Indians, just like Asians. Chinese architectural styles and a penchant for bright, bold colors. <laughs> Chai the tongue, Thailand. Houses that look like film sets and nighttime crowds to rival airports at peak travel times. <laughs> Anything wow. that's between two and eight Oh, minutes, wow. Is that to clean your feet? And on the plates here. Except, of course, the tables and chairs. Mm, you need a bit food. of courage, but not a particularly robust stomach to eat your fill. Hmm. The king and his wife. The wares spilling nice out food, onto man. sidewalks further crowd Bangkok's bustling pavements. Giraffes! Love it, and the locals have learned to live with it. But many street Antiques. vendors don't pay proper taxes. At best, we're told they make unofficial donations to the police. Ah, oh really? That's a thorn in the side of the military junta that seized power in 2014, and a problem for its state coffers. Hmm. If it were up to the government, all this trading would take place in the regulated, monitored context of organized markets. Oh. Some street vendors have already been cleared. Street vending, not bad at all. But of course, most governments would try to for you keep things in one A location. A good compromise between the chaotic street food stalls and the polished night market is a hearty Thai barbecue. Diners help themselves to as much food as they can eat for around five euros. 
Then they cook or fry it at their table to their taste. Oh really? That's one of those that want to do that. I mean, tourists should definitely try more than they're served in typical tourist restaurants. The ingredients are fresh and properly cooked. That's why everything here is very hygienic. As is the street food too. I would rather the street food definitely. The whole idea of the outdoor eating. Not go to the regular places like uh, Kaosan and all these uh, tourist places, but to go into the side side roads. We call the, they're called soys. And that's where you can find the real Thai street food. And uh, you will have something different than the Pad Thai. From herring fillets to masaman curries, this Dutch chef and his colleagues get plenty of inspiration from Thailand's street kitchens, even after years in Bangkok. I think I prefer the whole idea of street food, eh? This is nice, but I rather the street food for sure. The fresh shrimp tartar. Seasoned with chili for the Fresh typical starter. with mango for a touch of the exotic and avocado. So they're working there, this chef. Into a smaller salad. A very small salad. <laughs> oh, <watch> that. <laughs> no way, give me the street food. I need a lot to eat, man. Prefers to boast with the view it affords. <laughs> I cannot take this. You see this, this small bit of exotic food. I cannot handle this. I would like my big plate of food, please. <laughs> wow. There's a gym, a public gym, please. Mm. I have to go gym. The Swan Lung Pini, or Swan Lung for short is Thailand's biggest open-air fitness venue. Wow, for real. When temperatures drop a little in the late afternoon, uh, locals head here for a workout. It's an open pack gym, that's nice. And they've got to pay a fee. Everyone's allowed to train, spontaneously, without a contract. Ah. Those who come just the one time pay 50 cents. The monthly price is roughly five euros. Not bad, not bad at all. We had stuff like that. Whipping yourself we had stuff shape. like that in my com um, country. And many other they said it was a the playground. Park. And then there's stretching and jogging too. But beware, there are rules. There's a designated area and joggers have to run in a counterclockwise direction. There's more. That's amazing. Hmm. have to keep an eye on the time because there's a daily 40-second state-mandated pause in the park that's strictly enforced. Yeah, then the National Anthem of Thailand. This guy that wants to start running again. That's so nice and respectable that they're doing that. That is so respectable. Oh, <laughs> the national yes. Wherever it's played, people are expected stop. to stop in their tracks. It's frequently confused with Thailand's second anthem, which also brings public life to a standstill. But it's dedicated just to the king, Grace. one of the richest men in the world. He's rich in knowledge. I don't think he'll want to be considered the, the richest man in the world. He's rich in knowledge. Not maybe money, but knowledge, love. That's what he's rich in. Love, compassion, wisdom education, caring, gentleness, he's rich in that. He might be rich in money, but I know for sure. He wants to be known for that. Minutes before the death of King Rama the Ninth, the oldest male monarch in the world. At the time, people were praying for their king, whom they venerated far more than his successor. But nobody would talk about that publicly because insulting the monarch is a crime 
that carries a sentence of up to 15 That is good. I like that. Don't insult the leader of the country. Beloved, venerated, idolized. The mourning period for the dead king was set at one year. After 70 years on the throne, many people in Thailand feel that that's too short, too short for rather sure. than too long. Public life is now back on track, except on the roads, of course. That's why, for our trip from the historic to the modern center, we've chosen a mode of transport that's definitely congestion-free. Boats. The Klong boat. Wow, must be uh, awesome going on that there. Must be awesome. Over the wow. past century, almost all of Bangkok's canals have been filled in to create room for roads. There are speedboats in regular operation that on must one be of the awesome. few remaining waterways. Hey. Looks very peaceful. When the water in the Klong festers after long dry periods, the stench from the canal rivals Venice at the height of summer. Really? <laughs> but never mind. I know. A ride on a Klong boat is an That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> wow. The trip on the canal is a trip along the city's future past. Mm, that should have put it. Properties are classed as premium locations in Bangkok if they can be reached by SkyTrain, by underground, or by one of the major arterial roads. That's not the case with the area around the canal. Wow, that's a as lot, a, result, a lot. Property prices are more reasonable here, and the pace of urban densification is slower too. Really? When money speaks, the truth is silent. Hmm. Entire neighborhoods in Bangkok often have to make way for new construction projects. Heritage buildings, town planning. They've heard of that here, but such things tend to get in the way of development. We're visiting an area that's so far been able to withstand the construction boom, mm. at least in part, located by the Embassy Quarter. The starting point of our tour is Somerset Park. Somerset the Park. private but publicly accessible green spaces in the city. It's right on the attractive Swan Plu Road. You always have to live a natural setting around Instead, the city. Instead, we opt for a mode of transport whose characteristic engine noise Gave it its onomatopoeic name. Very clear. Tuk tuk. Tuk tuks are a symbol of Thailand. Most tourists have never taken a tuk tuk before, and they want to try at least once. No wonder it's fun, and you sit in the cool breeze. Nice. I like to see it. Honestly, it's very nice. Tuk tuks don't have a meter. Prices are often too high. That's why it's best to get your hotel reception to organize a tuk tuk and negotiate a good price for you in advance. It's worth looking at the ground in Bangkok from time to time because that's where one of the city's biggest problems becomes apparent. Bangkok is sinking. Sinking? If you pull the plug in a bathtub full of water and styrofoam beads, they sink to the bottom. Something comparable is happening in Bangkok really? because vast quantities of drinking water are being depleted from the ground beneath the city. Also, in the second half of the 20th century, the growing city sank by up to one meter per decade. If that had carried on at the same rate, parts of the city would already be below sea level. What? How can you tell by looking at the streets? which are often in perfect condition. Easy. While the houses and private plots are slowly losing height, the road level is regularly raised with a new layer of asphalt or concrete. Really? This road here was recently resurfaced. Even in heavy rain, visitors hardly get wet feet in the covered food stalls of this side street off the Suwan Plu. Unfortunately, this only moves the problem 
because the water finds its own way onto other roads and properties, as well as into the now lower lying ground floors of nearby houses. What? Mm. That time the footpath was lower than the my lower than my shop and the road was even lower than the footpath. Mm. And now they have raised the road by nearly 70 centimeters. So the road is higher than the footpath by nearly 35 to 40 centimeters. That is actually very shocking. Wild mountainous landscapes and untamed. So can this problem not be Bangkok, one might think. But it is. So uh, I don't understand why it's sinking like that. Admittedly, the rocks are all miniature and the natural setting is styled rather than untamed. Even the fog that wafts mysteriously over the grounds is not real. Eh! But everything's real in the turtle pond. The distance. The powerful jaws. That's why it's important to bring the correct tools to a private wild beast feeding center. If that bites you, you're going to... Towering wow. in the middle of the lake, there's a rock that looks like it's been cast out of wax. The many small buildings are dedicated to the spirits of the dead. They're memorials, not temples. Ah, oh, okay. The small haven of green is located on the grounds of the Wat Kayun. Its bell-shaped building is a chedi, the Thai version of a Buddhist stupa. Buildings of this type originally housed a relic. I'm still Buddha. thinking about That's this whole idea of, of relics the place sinking. Chedis are primarily a religious memorial, symbolizing the founder of Buddhism and his teachings. They're places of quiet prayer. The bell-shaped building style originated in Sri Lanka. Like a Sri Lanka. burial mound, it isn't suited to be a self-supporting dome. And chedis are therefore usually solid. It's like in, in, in Bangkok, there are a lot of things which is which are there the and it comes from another country in South and Asia. I noticed so they just said uh, Sri Lanka. They are Sri La the I saw, I watched the videos and the different things which, and they said that there's some things come from um, China, something comes from India, as I was saying earlier, and now Sri Lanka. So it seems like it's very diverse and that's that's good because can that means that different that persons are migrating the there, some to going to other countries, but that means Thailand stability. is a very, is a place which is rich in their own culture and culture or aspects of other culture around the world, or South Asia at least, and that is actually pretty good. To the beginning, the naming of the capital. 250 years ago, there was just a small fishing village here, with a relatively unimaginative name. Plum Grove on the river. Plum Grove Bangkok. on the river. King Rama I decided to build his new residence here, bigger and more beautiful than anything seen before. Its glory was to be summed up in its name. Wow. Many suggestions were made, and in the end, almost all of them were adopted. Oh, nice. That's good. Pick up a karaoke microphone. And sing the whole name with us. <laughs> I cannot. Kwamtanama. That's the entire name. That is the entire name. Oh, that's a song. That's a very long name if it's the entire name. Wow, <laughs> it's not as simple as John. <laughs> Remember Bangkok first time? John, 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 John. <laughs> 169 letters wow. without spaces in Thai. A superstar among city names. City of Angels. And that is amazing. That name is extraordinary. City of God, great capital of the world. Rich in palaces that resemble the heavenly home of the reborn God. 
and that were gifted by the god Indra. That's the very free, quick translation of this mouthful. That is a great, great, great video. To learn the name by heart, there's help in the form of this 1989 hit by the group Asani Wasan. Many people in Thailand use it as a memory aid. <laughs> That's a long name. The best time to practice Isn't there? musical brain training is probably a trip in the Chao Phraya express boat. That's this. Hey. It's the breeziest way of crossing Bangkok from north to south. I tell you, Thailand is filled with a lot of things to learn. The capital, which holds the record for the longest place name in the world. I tell you, Thailand is so awesome. Allah is a name. That is a nice video. I honestly love it. That was a good video. Thank you so very much for requesting it. Of course, I must admit, I was kind of stunned, shocked when they said that some parts are sinking. Um, this is a very good concern. Of course, I don't know if that video or that documentary was done before that problem was solved, but this is very concerning. Of course, thank you very much for requesting this video. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter if you want me to react to the video. Leave a comment below and I'll try my best to react to it. Thank you very much. Bye, guys.